A quick disclaimer before we get started. If you're a fan of the 2003 remake, this is no uh, cut down on you. I mean, the Saw will always be family. Even if you're a fan of the next generation or 2017's Leatherface. So, this is just one person's opinion on an extensive deep dive into why... Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2003 was a good movie, but missed the mark on being a good chainsaw movie. Starting off when you talk about what makes the original look so dark and gritty and very documentary-like. Now this was created simply due to the fact that you had a bunch of kids that came from the documentary background in school and started making a film that they did not know how to light properly or do properly according to them. Which, you know, is kind of like chasing a balloon and tripping over a suitcase with a million dollars in it. I mean, it was kind of accidental, but you still won the jackpot. In 2003, we get a much more slick, clean look. And I know that, you know, people always say, well, you can't make that kind of... Rather, it's got to be HD, it's got to be high quality. It's, if you're going to make a new film, well, yeah, you know, maybe that's true, but that takes away the charm that this film had. Because even in, say, the 70s or even more uh, early 80s, Films looked sleek. Films were, you know, we didn't have HD, but it wasn't this grainy 16 millimeter look. I mean, they had the ability. It just, that's not what they were going for. And so I don't believe that's what they should have gone for in the, uh, in the remake as well. Now, when it comes to the kids, or young adults, rather, in the original film, they were real. Um, in the remake, for the most part, I could say that as well. Um, they, they, the cast of kids, or I'll, I'll call them young adults, was good in, in, in the remake as well. But what they're doing in the remake is kind of stereotypical. Uh, in the original, they're just going to go to an abandoned house and hang out on a Saturday afternoon. And that is so real to reality. You know, that I, I, I have friends, me and my friends, would do something like that. In the remake, it's we're going to a Leonard Skinner concert because, hey, 70s, you know, and we've also went and got drugs because, you know, you can't have... A horror movie without somebody that does drugs. It's like, mm, okay, whatever. But all in all, the kids aren't really my big problem with this film, so we'll just let that go. The secondary is the first that we see of, in the original is them picking up the hitchhiker. There's nothing I can say about Ed Neal that... You can't already tell, he's fantastic in this role. Now in the remake, they pick up a hitchhiker, but it's a young lady. I'll give them credit on this one, because it is a um, homage, but it's doing its own thing. And that's what a remake should do. Touch on the important aspects of the original film, but or giving you something new and different, because why would you remake Texas Chainsaw Massacre anyway? It's the perfect film. But if you're going to, I like that. Now, when it comes to the family, that's what sets this film away from all the others. It is about family. It is about Grandpa the cook, Nubbins, and Leatherface. <clears throat> you don't get 
a family ensemble, you know, usually it's Jason or Freddie or Michael Myers, but this is a group, and it was perfect because everybody had personality, complete personality. The cook was kind of the patriarch. He looked over everybody. He took care of things. He was one that worked. He was, you know, the, even though he was a brother, he was kind of the father of the group. Then you have Grandpa, who was kind of the basis of everything. He taught them what they know. He was the slaughter king. And then you have the hitchhiker Nubbins, who is just so far out there, so far gone. Just a little crazy, but so good in the world. And then you have Leatherface, who's kind of the stay-at-home, protector, guardian, security guard, but loves his family uh, as in the killer mask. In the old lady mask, he's scared of his family. And then in the pretty lady mask, he's kind of the patriarch, if you will, of the family. Now when we look at the family in 2003, here's one of the big ones that I think they missed the mark. You ask anybody who's one of their favorite characters, who they say? R. Lee Ermey. And do not get me wrong, he is fantastic in this role. He is sadistic, he is great, I mean, he's, he's R. Lee. But here's the problem. He overshadows everybody else. He's the bad guy in this. And a lot of people would think that maybe the bad guy should really focus on Leatherface. I disagree with both. I think that Texas Chainsaw Massacre is at its best when it focuses on the entire family as a whole. <clears throat> now, that being said, Arlie is fantastic, but... Eh. Then you have other people like Mama or... You know, these, who else? You know, there's tons of people in this family. The ladies that live in the trailer, they're kind of insignificant. And especially in comparison to Arlie, it's apples and oranges. It's He's on a t top ten and they're down here at one or two. So, you don't have that. Everybody has a purpose. You have Jed, the little boy, who kind of plays off as, at the beginning, as the cook in the original, where it's kind of a warning. But other than that, everybody else uh, just is pretty insignificant, except for Leatherface. So we'll get to him a little later. Uh, let's go into the house. The house in the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre is a character. And this is what the filmmakers didn't understand. Well, they understood, but they misunderstood it as well. They changed the character. They made it another iconic house. But that's like going, I'm going to make a Nightmare on Elm Street with Freddy. He's so iconic. I'm going to now make him a nun. It's like, you can't change it. But they did. And it looks nothing like the original. The other film's not part two, because that's the battle land. But <clears throat> three and four, they put them in a rustic country house that had the feel of the original, but wasn't the original. This one is just this old plantation it looks like something straight out of uh, Louisiana, even though I do know that it is in Texas, but anyway. The house is such an iconic character. Once you change it, then it, it lost something for me. Uh, the film ends with Leatherface getting his arm chopped off. That's all I'm going to say about that. That's stupid. 
Leatherface Mask. Now, this is something that I think every sequel, every prequel, had a problem with. When you watch the original, it looks like somebody skinned somebody's face. It looks like leather. It looks like tanned flesh. Everything else from that point on, from part two on, looks like a latex rubber mask. Some designs I like, some I don't. I don't think part two was a bad design. I just, it looked like a latex mask. And for the remake, I don't think it looks bad, but it doesn't look like flesh to me. It looks like something you would have bought at Spirits. <clears throat> now, finally, my big pet peeve with the 2002 remake. <clears throat> Leatherface stands out from Michael Myers, from Jason, from Freddy, because he's not a sadistic killing machine. He's a shy, quiet child who's scared to death and just wants to protect his family. I can imagine when Drayton says, I'm going to work, watch out for Grandpa. He takes on that persona of a child like, I have to do whatever it takes to take care of Grandpa. And all of a sudden, these kids start coming into his house. He didn't go after them. They came to him, but he did what he had to do to take care of family. In the remake, Andrew Monofsky plays him like every other mindless, stupid, brain-dead slasher. He puts on the mask. The mask even makes him look mad. I mean, that's ridiculous. And then he becomes a Jason clone, a Michael Myers clone. Just another brainless killer who hates everybody, and I'm going to come after you and kill you simply for the sake of doing it. That's not who Leatherface was. Alright, so now that I've probably ticked off plenty of people, thank you for listening. And this was my, uh, my take on the 2003 remake. If you'd like to hear any other takes on any of the other films, um, hey, drop a comment and let me know. Thanks. This was the Jigsaw, the admin for Texas Chainsaw Maniacs. And we'll see you next time. Girl I met last night was lovely.